B. Well, this morning, those in support of the mayor's veto are applauding her actions. Right now, Alfredo Ortiz with the Job Creators Network joins us in studio this morning. And you're saying the mayor did the right thing here, even though she said, you know, she supports raising the minimum wage, but the city can't afford this right now economically. Right, absolutely. Well, if you look at the impact overall it was probably going to have in the city, the estimates are somewhere about $115 million, I think, over the next four years if that were to pass. So the idea, first of all, that it would impact the city was great. But even more than that is the impact of small business owners. I think people forget that these minimum wage increase, these hikes, these fight for 15s, is actually hurting the very people that we're trying to help. If you think about inner cities and you think about who actually owns these local small businesses, a lot of these are minorities, they're black, Hispanic women, right, that are actually using this as their first opportunity to really get a piece of that American dream. When you have these minimum wage hikes that frankly, in many cases, really can drive businesses out of business. Um, that's, the real, that's the real issue here, right? And so one of the things I think that we're fighting for is this fight for $50,000 $50, per year jobs through skills training. I think in this country, we think the major issue is not a wage gap issue, but a skills gap issue. So we look at the issue overall, when you look at it across the country, for example, there are about 400,000 people that are aged 25 and over out of a workforce of 77 million people, hourly workers, that are making this minimum wage. We really need to address that issue. But that's one half of 1% of those workers. We can address that as this country if we all band together. I think the real shame, unfortunately, is, for example, on Councilwoman Clark, who is just saying, who doesn't really understand the issue at hand. And again, we applaud Mayor Pugh for being able to make a courageous decision and take that veto because that is an important piece to be able to protect the very businesses that frankly cover and, and fund most of the activities in her city. So we applaud her. Okay, and there are a lot of people who are barely making ends meet, who are working multiple jobs trying to get this, that this $15 Correct. an hour would have helped in the shorter future. So you're saying you want to focus on better salaries overall. Well, that's right. I mean, I think while it helps in the short term, that's the problem over how many short terms do we have to have this, right? This is a problem that's been going on for a decade or so, if not longer. And I think the problem is, is that we, we are forgetting that the real fight should be on skills training. And so what we need to focus on those people who really, out of no fault of their own in many cases, are in these jobs. One of the things I always tell people, you know, if you add another dollar or two to a zero wage because you're out of a job, that's not going to help you. We need to be able to keep those jobs here in the city and keep jobs like this across the country in the cities that really are helping, especially our youth. If you look at unemployment, for example, amongst our youth, it's about 14, 15 percent. If you look amongst Hispanics, it's about 17 percent. And amongst our black youth, it's over 25 percent. One out of every four black youth, black teens, are out of a job. We need to go back. We've got a bigger issue in this country. Again, it's the skills gap training. Education is one part that we need to address, and I hopefully, I know, I think Mayor Pugh is at an event today talking about that, but that's what we really should be focused on. I urge small business owners across the city and across the countries to rally around folks like Mayor Pugh to be able to stand up to a lot of what we call the kind of political and media elites that actually don't understand what's going on. The real issue, again, is that skills gap training. And so increasing the minimum wage by $1 or $2 is still going to keep people in these minimum wage type jobs. We need to do more for them. We need to fight for those, not by increasing minimum wages, but by asking for more skills training so that they can advance their careers and their families. And Baltimore's minimum wage is now going to follow the states. It's going to go up this summer to, I think, 925 in July and then 1010 the next year. Correct. Uh, but you're, how do you focus on creating? I'm sure people would love to have a $50,000 a year sure, job. So how sure. do you get that skills? Well, so, so, we so a, lot, a lot of that is, um, for example, we heard from a, an HVAC company in Kentucky, for example, that was making paying $50,000 per year and on the job training. And they still can't fill those jobs. So there's a lot of folks out there that I think are happy and willing to try to offer better paying jobs and skills training, but we gotta push and emphasize that by just pushing for minimum wage increases. I say that's the easy way out for our country. We need to do the hard work of being able to find the people who really need that help, who need those skills training, who want to advance themselves so that they can find these jobs. And, and quite frankly, between city and state and private enterprise, I think as a country, we can band together. I go back to that number of 400,000 people out of over 77 million hourly workers in this country, one half of 1%. That's, that, that is a problem that this country can easily tackle. I think we're taking the easy way out by fighting for just 15. I think we have to do this fight for 50, which is what we're doing. 
again, the $50,000 per year jobs. All right, Alfredo Ortiz, Job Creators Network, thank, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, from parkas to flip-flops,